Stephen, welcome. Thank you very much. Lovely to be here. And last time you were here, of course, was art as well. Yes, indeed. It's great to be back so soon. It's normally, I've, I think I've been coming here for so over 20 years. This is the fourth time now. But yeah, art was only a year ago, so it's great to be back. Okay, so are you ready for these questions? I am raring to go. <laughs> so the first one, stage presence. Who or what has been the greatest influence in your career? Um, well, I, I'm, I think in my career, the person that I always, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to get into acting was uh, Stan Laurel. Just used to adore watching him when I was a kid and I still, I still keep him with me and keep him in mind, especially when you're doing something like comedy because there was such a, he had such a light touch, such a very dry touch. But then you take that to each job that you're doing and I suppose the person who's influencing me the most during educating Rita has to be my co-star Jess. Um, she's, you know, when you're doing a two-hander, you have to be so reliant on the other person and she's brilliant. I get to, to watch her very close up every night and the more we perform it, the more she finds out of it. So you, you watch the other, the other actor grow before your very eyes. So she's definitely the most influential person with me at the moment. Okay, so the next question. All the world's a stage. What has been your favourite place to perform? Um, I, oh, I've performed in lots and lots of lovely places. I, I adore the, um, the Royal Exchange in Manchester because um, it's, it's built inside what was the old Corn Exchange and at one time the biggest room in the world. Um, and then they've built this, what looks like a lunar module, which is... a uh, a three, a three structured in the round purpose built theatre and it's, it's the nearest you get to walking out and feeling like a gladiator. Um, it's incredibly empowering but terrifying at the same time. There's, there's literally no place to hide but it's a, it's a beautiful space. Okay, and the next question, stage fright. What's been the toughest moment of your career? Um, the toughest moment in my career, well, I th well I th again, it was on stage at, uh, at the Royal Exchange in Manchester. We were in proper Elizabethan Shakespearean costume to do um, All's Well. Uh, was it All's Well? No, what was it I was doing? Um, I might have to, you might have to edit this bit out <laughs> and we'll come back to it. Love's Labour's Lost, that's yeah. what it was. Okay. It was Love's Labour's Lost. I was in full traditional gear. And at one point I did a sort of fancy dance move and my trousers split from the front right to the back. <laughs> um, and I was also very aware that underneath this costume I was wearing Fred Flintstone boxer shorts. Right. Which wasn't terribly Shakespearean Not at all. Not of the period. Not really. <laughs> and it was about 10 minutes to go to the interval. So this arm had to drop <laughs> down there to reveal, well, cover anything that may be revealed. And my fellow actors on stage were so worried, they thought I'd dislocated my shoulder. So they were trying to hint that an ambulance should be called immediately, <laughs> rather than me just getting more sensible underwear. <laughs> just the wardrobe department. Exactly. <laughs> A wardrobe malfunction. Yes. Now I wanted to ask you about um, sort of tough moments, but sort of tough challenges. And um, particularly with this one, obviously we had art uh, last year and there was just the three of you on mm -hmm. stage, this time a two-hander. Is that something in when you make choices you like a challenge? Oh, definitely. And um, I, I try to um, choose something that I haven't done before. And it's very rare that you get to do two-handers. There aren't that many written. And um, Willie Russell, uh, who wrote this, was going to be available and very involved in the project. So that was, that was a huge bonus. Um, and it was it was it was just. Jess and I, well, Jess suggested that I would be a very good Frank. I'd just seen her on stage in something at the at live theatre up in Newcastle. So I reread the play and took it to David Pugh, our producer, and we both auditioned for it. So it's kind of our project. So that's it. We're, we're very much involved in this. And uh, yeah, it is a challenge every night doing when it's just the two of you and you concentrating like mad for, for two hours and you do feel very physically 
mentally drained as well. You, surprisingly so. Feels like you've done a big a big workout, but it's, it's and I get to sit down for most of it. So it is. It's just a mental workout. That's that desk wary. is important. It's very important. <laughs> And I think that's really interesting that, you know, the two of you decided to come together and, and do that. That's, you know, that seems quite unique, I feel. Yes, and a real sort of dream dream come true for us. Now we're actually on the road performing it and, and working just as hard to keep it fresh every single night. Um, you're a week in each venue and that changes. The audiences are always very different. So it's it's a great challenge and, and it's wonderful for, for keeping you on your toes because you never get the same audience twice. And it's lovely, but it's amazing, you know, that the play is still as fresh as when Willie wrote it 40 years ago and a lot of the same issues haven't changed much since then. So it, it's great to see how readily audiences adopt either Rita or Frank or, or and both of them, They you know, both characters become so heavily dependent on each other and I think the audience recognise that as well. Fantastic. Centre stage. What has been the moment in your career that you feel defines you as an artist? Oh, my word. Um, well, I, l last year I was asked by the, the brilliant Matthew Warchus, who runs the Old Vic, um, to, to play Scrooge in A Christmas Carol, uh, which is... Uh, a book I've well I had read to me first by my uncle and by my father as well and um, I think it's the most famous sort of Christmas story and possibly story about redemption that's ever been written and Scrooge is, is such a, an incredible sort of iconic character so to be asked to play that at one of the most famous theatres in the world last year and to see Matthew's um, vision for it and it, it was a real honour and, and I, I felt so privileged to to be on the posters outside the Old Vic and walk in there and perform it over Christmas and it had a real effect on the audience and on me as a performer and so I think that might be a, a defining moment. Lovely. Okay, so the next question Stagehand, what piece of advice would you give someone wanting to pursue a career like yours? Um, absolutely sort of wed yourself to it and try and read as many different styles of play as possible from different periods. Listen to as much radio drama as you can. Go and see as, as many different types of performances on stage film, TV, really immerse yourself in it um, and re just read as much as you can because it's down to, to writers um, especially and we, you're just um, an, a, little, a little cog in the whole machine but it always comes from a writer so to always get as close to them as possible, that would be my advice. <laughs> okay, and the final question, the next stage. What does the future hold for Stephen Tomkinson? Um, well, we finished this run of Educating Rita in the middle of August, and then there's absolutely nothing in the book. Um, hopefully... A big holiday. Uh, well, that would be nice. But uh, David Pugh has produced both shows that I've done recently, Art and, and Educating Rita. He's, he's wanting to maybe take them again on the road to theatres that haven't seen it yet. Um, so I'd be more than happy with that. I've been spoiled rotten with, uh, with those two plays and with uh, Christmas Carol. So I've, I've had a wonderful time in the theatre and hopefully there might be more of that to come. But there's always the, uh, the unknown element and that's, that's something I've, I've always embraced rather than fear. So uh, I know not what yet, but uh, hopefully I will soon. The audiences have been loving Educating Rita, so it wouldn't surprise me if it heads out further. That would be nice. That would be really lovely. I'd be very happy with that. Okay, so that is it on those questions. How did you find them? They were, they were great. Got me, got me thinking, got me searching. So it was all good. And just before you go, tell us why you think people should come and see Educating Rita. Um, well, come and find out why it's lasted 40 years, why modern audiences are still enjoying it, and why Willie Russell is one of our greatest national treasures as a writer. Stephen, thank you very much. Thank you.